This is a report insight on the report published by Wamdan Arabnet about the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak on entrepreneurship ecosystem in the Middle East. What they did was they studied 250 startups in the Middle East from different countries. And uh, the, the startups were distributed across multiple, uh, multiple seg segments. What I found interesting is that from 250 startups throughout the Middle East, they're not skewed in a heavily in a certain way. They're distributed across multiple sectors. Plus those that are software SaaS and other, I deal a lot with founders every day uh, as I advise them, and they cannot properly define their business. It's a, it's a shortcoming that they had to navigate. So a lot of these software and SaaS and other will likely be within, within the other categories. Usually the founders are in love with the technology itself, AI, blockchain, for, and so on, beyond the actual sector. But at the end, they do serve as a sector. There's no way about it. The, the startup development stage, another thing that I found uh, appealing here is the, uh, the stage of the startups, what stage that they're in. So here we're looking at most of them. We're looking at 75% are within... They're early seed, pre-seed angels, so they're very, very, very early. Only a few are, are large enough. And so 75% of the startups, a lot of those will just die out or just stay at a very small position for many, many years. So from these seed, pre-seed angel, a subset will, will actually grow into series A, series B, series C. And the sign of, of all of these small companies, it's, it's a combination of their, that they're at least before COVID, there was enough money in the system to, 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 to fuel this. And uh, another aspect is it's hip and cool to be an entrepreneur. So a lot of people want to give that uh, a try. Um, and also because we are the Middle East is an emerging market. So there continues to be a need for newer companies to solve existing problems. So looking at the impact of the pandemic, so going into the details of, uh, of COVID now, um, here you're looking at almost 6% said they've already closed down. And 22% have suspended their operations, meaning that they are hoping and will likely resume after COVID uh, uh, subsides. And, you know, and depending on how long that is, a lot of them will just move from suspended operation to, to company shutdown. Um, those who felt there's a higher increase in demand. The no change one, I have a few customers like this where they were already online before, so they were physically non-existent. All of this was online. They felt no change, a little bit increase, a little bit decrease. So that usually falls in, in, in this. And the increase in demand, as you can see, so when you see the news that so many people are going into groceries and other delivery aspects, it's not a large number. It's not a large number. And you'll see other numbers in the report. It's not a long, a long number, a big number. So increasing the demand here and struggling to meet the rise in demand. I like this. This is nice and graphical about uh, if the startup has seen increase or decrease in revenue in the last three months. You know, prefer not to say. I'm assuming those are uh, those have a decrease, but they were not comfortable acknowledging it. So I'll have this as a decrease along along with the rest. Areas of the business that have witnessed the most impact. So growth, operations, and funding, and marketing. So we, you know, there's nothing left. All all of the business, any part of all of parts of the business, have been impacted by, by COVID. Uh, in terms of the operation, you'll get to see here that payment collection and suppliers. So those are money related. So it's an ecosystem. All of business is an ecosystem. If one party cannot pay the other. So party A cannot pay party B, party B cannot pay its employees, party B cannot pay its suppliers, and hence their suppliers cannot pay their employees and suppliers. So that's the loop that, uh, that we all get stuck in. And the impact on the startups in, ter startups in terms of tech, uh, well, obviously, if your business is, is not growing now, you will have less, uh, you, will you will use less resources in terms of the tech and growth. And then you have the other extreme of those who have this huge demand now, um, and it's usually pivoted in a certain direction. So it's a new market. So it's six months worth of development that you, you cannot do in three weeks. And there's also, so that will take a time to ramp up. Also, uh, there's also the psychological aspect of 
what will happen when it's when when COVID is done? Will I continue as a business in, the, in this new line of business, or will I have to go back to what I did before, and so on? So that lack of clarity also affects how how the business uh, operates. Funding. One thing I liked is that fifty percent have more than six months of runway. So this says 50% have less than six months. So you have another 50% that have more than six months of runway. Something I've been trying to do a lot with my advisory business and I'm trying to, 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 to advise others. It's very difficult to have six months of, of runway in the bank. So to, to get to see, uh, uh, you know, some of them have, a good portion of them have that, that's, that is a healthy sign. The latest funding, funding by the by the pandemic for sure. So fifty percent acknowledge yes, and then you have an, uh, another eleven percent who who will who are in hopes of. So they have an oral commitment likely from their investor to receive funds, but that also the investor have their own commitments elsewhere and their personal commitments. So that also might be uh, uh, might be difficult. And this ten percent is for the other ten percent above that earlier in the report that in indicated that they have new lines of business now. When they say our current investors involved with you day to day, not sure means no. So, uh, so you're looking at more than you're looking at around 75 uh, percent uh, that their investors are not uh, active or helping them uh, go out. Of this. Although all investors claim that they have this uh, value added in not just money, we're smart money, and so on. When you look at numbers like this, it confirms that a lot of it is is, is speak. So you have 25% where some of the investors are actually actively working with existing founders to do this. Uh, this is nicely designed as a, in terms of layout and, and content for a lot of information uh, that are even how they responded to the pandemic. Uh, so you have, you're looking at new business models, you're looking at unfortunate reduction of employees and staff and payments and so on. So that that is a definite yes and then you have look at those who've taken out loans those are tough to take now tough and then partnerships that means two parties are struggling do we come together that gives us a few months additional months to, to, until maybe COVID subsides uh, within then salary cuts across the board you have 50 percent or more less than 50 percent uh, and reduction number of employees so that's a uh, that's all across what sort of support would help your startup? Money, 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 money. That's it for you. That summarizes everything.